one practice that we often recommend to folks is to, you know, import your files into their individual files and then reference them all into what we call a container file. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm now going to go to kind of a container file that will hold all my terrains for me. So if I want to look at all my terrains, I can come to this one DG in here. So I have this kind of already created. It's currently blank, and we're going to reference it in and go through that process and see how it acts. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, first of all, let's take a look here. We have a blank DGN. We're in the 2D file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reference in that 3D DGN file. So attach that first one that we imported into the 3D file. I'm going to attach that and say OK and do a fit. And we see that the program, again, is smart enough. If I go and look at 2D and 3D, even though I was in the 2D model when I attached that 3D file, it was smart enough to know that is a 3D terrain element. So we want that represented in the 3D model. So it also attached it to the default 3D. If I, I had that model already created empty here in this DGN, so I didn't create it this time, but it saw that it was already created. It attached the terrain reference to it as well. So again, even though I was just sitting here in the 2D model, when I did the reference attachment, it was smart enough to know this is a terrain. It has a 3D component to it. So I'm going to attach it to the default 3D model as well, which is very helpful uh, for us. You know, we're kind of allowing the product to manage that interaction between 2D and 3D for us, right? And then let's go ahead and attach the start 2D file, which we created a little bit differently. So we'll attach that was start 2D. Remember, this is the one where I imported the train into the 2D and it automatically created the 3D for us. So I'm going to attach that. And on this one, since the terrain is in the 3D and it's referenced into the 2D. This one, I do have to pay attention a little bit to the nesting. I want it to grab the display that nesting reference there. So I'm going to make that a one and I'm going to import that. And it's again, it did both attachments for me. That's kind of the point I wanted to demonstrate there is that even though I was in the 2D model, I attached the reference and I chose the default, the 2D model there. It was smart enough to know that, hey, this uh, 3D is necessary for the display of this terrain. It actually is residing in the 3D. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to attach it as well. So if we go look at our 3D model over here and look at the uh, reference dialog for it, we see that we have both DGNs attached to it as well, even though we've been just you know working in this 2D model the whole time doing our attachments. So, so again, just uh, did that demonstration there just to, again, illustrate the program is really going to help us manage the 3D information for us. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.